Billy here at Booker King Podcast. Today, my guest is Brian Richards from Sauna Space. And as the name suggests, Brian provides all things sauna. And not just that, but he really is leading the way in the best possible sauna products you could probably ever, ever want to get. Um, we're going to be talking about the difference between Brian's saunas versus traditional Swedish saunas. Um, and talk about other saunas that are on the market and why brands are definitely superior in my opinion and the opinion of many others and we're also going to be talking about the difference to having the red light in the sauna which um, and how beneficial that is along with a whole other bunch of questions for Brian so I'm going to bring Brian on now and we will start digging into all things sauna. Hi. Hi, Brian. How are you? Hi, good morning. How are you? Thank you for being here, Brian. Yeah, absolutely. Happy to be here. Early where, where you are? Early morning? Well, not so early. I've been up for a while. Have Used you? To, did the sauna. Are you a morning um, person? Did my morning routine. <laughs> I, I kind of ebb and flow. I have, I have seasons where I wake up really early, and then I have others where I sleep in. Right. So I, I try not to be too dogmatic in any one thing, forever. You yeah. Know, for just for habit's sake. But yeah, right now I've been waking up earlier and. The sauna is, is probably one thing that I do continually use uh, whenever I have access to it. And um, just my other morning things I do in my routine, I do some meditation usually in the morning. Uh, sometimes I use my vibration cushion. It's called the In Harmony right. meditation cushion. So it vibrates, you know, in sync with the healing soundtracks or whatever you play. And then I take my morning supplements and I had my morning matcha. Today was a matcha day, so I had amazing, I make an amazing magical matcha. It's got like a lot of things in it, a lot of super ingredients. All the super ingredients. Do you drink coffee, Brian? No. No. Never? I used to, but no, I, I avoid it now. Yeah. Yeah, I used to drink it a lot as a stimulant, mm. you know, to working and so forth and uh, but it it's it is a stimulant and it disrupts disrupted my sleep too much sort of on the long term and I find without if I have caffeine if I have it from matcha like I drink peak matcha which is right just really good matcha that's heavy metal tested I find that it it's nourishing it doesn't mm. feel like a stimulant drug like coffee does for me. If I drink coffee in the afternoon, I stay up till like 2 p.m. or 2 a.m. Yeah. yeah. I just, I don't want to be uh, reaching for anything. No, you so don't I want to. I found the... like I was reaching for it, you know, like, oh, where's my yeah. coffee? Then that's where I was. I, I said, nope, none of that. Yeah, I... So I, I took a vow last year of, hey, I'm not going to drink any coffee for a period of months and let's see what happens. And it was great. It was actually wonderful. And so now I, I have, my father has a really nice coffee machine, an espresso machine. So once in a while when I visit, I have a, a coffee there. Um, but it, even that I drink like this Four Sigmatic coffee that has probiotics yeah. and mushrooms in it. And it's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, so even with that, I'm being selective. I know the one. But yeah. very, very selective. I. I you know, our body makes, uh, and that's what's so beautiful about what we should talk about, you know, with the light therapy and the sauna and our firelight sauna, our body makes our own chemicals. Our body mm -hmm. makes uh, everything it needs to feel good and be aligned mm -hmm. with itself and with the universe. Mm -hmm. The nourishment we need from a dietary perspective is very simple. The challenge yeah. today is what we're dealing with in the 
in the modern environment is a is a really a, a tidal wave of toxicity that our ancestors didn't deal with. So we're sauna before maybe it, it's always been a cleansing detoxification ritual, but it becomes oh so more more essential today to Absolutely. keep our system healthy and clean versus yeah. the way it was before. Mm -hmm. And even the sauna, even beyond the sauna doing taking things to support heavy metal detox like like uh, micronized zeolite spray and mm. different binders uh, can be taken which i highly recommend taking after the sauna all these things are really essential today to uh, get the get the foreign or the, the the things that are inside of us that don't belong that aren't us yeah. that prevent us from being us and prevent us from being you know our highest and true and best version of ourselves it's uh it's it's a little trickier nowadays than it was a hundred or a thousand years ago yeah absolutely we're being bombarded and i think i think you're right i think it's it's so much simpler than um than what is out there i don't know how better way to say that how we're just being you know, it gets to the point where I just think, oh my God, this is so ridiculous, you know, where there's so much advice of just on everything, like everything, there's so much advice, you know, how even, even right down to how you're supposed to breathe, you know, and I just think, oh my goodness, like, where are we going with all this? Because, um, and this is where I love the saunas and, and the light therapy, because um, I find that that's almost it's like the skeleton for me it, personally I feel like if I'm getting sunlight because I'm a bit like a lizard where I can sit in really really high temperatures that other people can't tolerate and I it doesn't do anything I just am absorbing it you know like a sponge and I, I can do that all day long where people are just like oh my god i can't sit in that another minute you know and they leave they can't even be in the shade and um and i find that is the most nourishing thing for my body personally is the heat and whatever that is that we're getting from the sun because you know the sun is nourishing us in so many more ways we only ever hear don't we mm -hmm. it's vitamin d3 and things like that but actually i think it's nourishing us in so many more ways than we can even possibly comprehend um and i just feel mm -hmm. like if though when those things are set or are in motion for for me personally i feel so well i feel so strong and so healthy and so well um as compared to not having those things which makes it really tough here in the uk because we uh we don't get very much sunlight and we don't get much heat either <laughs> um and last year yeah was the worst year i think mm -hmm. we've ever had like ever in in my memory of paying attention to those things from a small child you know i suppose you don't really pay attention to those things when you're young but too much but um in my memory i can't remember a worse year actually than last year it was it's just been raining non-stop i think for about 12 months and um we didn't actually get a summer. I think we got about two weeks in June. And that was about it. July and August, I was wearing a coat because it was so cold. Um, mm. So, and that was where I was going to go with this in saying to you, um, with sauna space, one of the things I think is so lovely about what you've done is it's not just the sauna, is it? It's not just the heat, but your red lights that um yeah I'm giving you that so yeah it's it's mm -hmm. it's 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 giving you the nourishment from the sun that is the majority of what the sun gives you so you you mentioned how nourishing the sun is for you and, and it really is for most people uh it, well it is for everybody some people have uh, toxicity issues that make them or lots of seed oils you know seed oil consumption that makes them more vulnerable to like the ultraviolet rays and the oxidative stress of the high energy mm -hmm. wavelengths of the sun but, but yes we, we we 
it's sometimes we easily forget that the sun nourishes all life on earth and it's not just plants that absorb light and make energy out of it humans do too we have mm. a, a system similar to photosynthesis in animals and it's called mitochondrial stimulation so we have an enzyme in our mitochondria which are the energy producers of the cells in a very crude sense and they are in every cell of the body so every cell of the body is designed to absorb a very special band of light which includes visible red light that we see and near infrared light that we don't see and if we look at the sun what's interesting is the sun is um, spectrally like 11 percent red that we see it's about 40 percent near infrared that we don't see right but near infrared wavelengths also penetrate a lot deeper into the body than red wavelengths they're actually the deepest penetrator of all wavelengths near infrared are the only wavelengths that penetrate bone tissue so right. we're talking about doing bringing this nourishing healing effect to the brain mm -hmm. which is protected by the skull only near infrared light does that so when you look at the sun and we stand in front of the sun because of its deep penetration over 70 percent of the power we absorb in terms of photons per second is near yeah. infrared so our experience with the sun is a little bit of ultraviolet and and a, a good amount of visible light but the vast majority over 70 percent of our experience is with this near infrared band of light right and that's the band of light that goes in deep and stimulates mitochondrial responses when it's absorbed by the light receptor in the mitochondria mm -hmm. and it also heats us radiantly right so we're recreating we're, we're uh, here at sauna space being informed by this fact we're mimicking how the sun heats you and stimulates you with near infrared light our bulbs are specially designed and and the spectrum centers on that near infrared band and so when when we're using a lot of near infrared light to heat the body and to stimulate mitochondrial responses we have a lot of things that happen that are more than just the heat yes mm -hmm. there's a heat that's radiant and that's why our saunas heat you up really fast and yeah. produce the sauna effect that you want in all saunas. But what should be understood is that that light therapy effect where the near infrared light hits the mitochondria has a whole different set, um, although they are synergistic, a whole different set of biological systems that it activates. Right. So it, it, it creates cellular energy. It promotes uh, vasodilation through nitric oxide release and and then in conjunction with the production of reactive oxygen species in this case uh, um, it works for good to uh, repair our genes and our epigenetic state and our gene expression so there's anti-aging effects growth right. there's regenerative effects in the cells there's anti-inflammation effects in the cells and when you do this in all of the cells you see upper level um, effects as well like immune modulation it makes your immune system work better uh, you, you see uh, pain relief uh, and then in the literature you're seeing the use of in the, you know thousands and thousands probably seven thousand studies now the use of of this light to to uh, recover from stroke from tbi for neuropsychiatric problems for so many things basically the way we define it in and research is that photobiomodulation, light controlling biology, also known as light therapy, mm -hmm. is the use of red and near infrared light to heal damaged and degenerate cells and to optimize function of healthy cells. Right. So it, it makes the things that are broken, it fixes the things that are broken, yeah. and the things that are healthy, it actually makes them work better. And it has other effects too, like near infrared light stimulates melatonin production in the cells right. it's the body's number one antioxidant right. so when you're in the sun you're not just healing and getting energy literally directly from the wavelengths of near infrared you're also refilling your body's antioxidant reserves right on a daily basis you're also structuring the water in your body so that mm -hmm. is this process of taking water and and correcting the the electronic the quantum state of it that makes yep. it more bioavailable yeah and it does its job better in the thousand million things that it does in the body so all of these things are happening simultaneously when they're happening in your when with use with the use of near infrared light in the deep organs of the body and the nervous system and the brain mm -hmm. 
Hmm. There's a there's a there's a psychological and even spiritual nourishment that's going on. So we forget this, but we're designed to get a lot of sunlight, and most of what we get from the sun is near infrared. Hmm. And it uh, even like from an energy perspective, if we live like our ancestors did, they maybe not in England, you know, maybe closer to the the tropics or more, more closer to the equator. And we had our, you know, our shirts off, you know, we're substantially uh, exposed to the sun. You can get 70% of your caloric requirements. So 70% of your energy mm. needs you can get from the sun. Mm. And so you would only, if you think about that, you'd only have to eat mm. like 30% of what you eat now, maybe in England where there is no yeah. sun yeah. and there's a lot of clouds. Well, you notice so, that during so, the summer, don't you? That you just eat less in general. You don't have that same appetite dry. Well, I don't anyway. And um, I definitely notice that with my children. They they don't eat as much in the summer when when we do get sun. Um, but I, I th I've noticed that for yeah, years that you just feel like you're being nourished. You go out in the sun it, and it's really amazing because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a gardener and I grow a lot of our own food. And it always makes me laugh because I spend all this time doing the seeds and, um, you know, planting it and then it's growing and I'm caring for it and weeding it and watering it and everything. And when we do have some sun and we do get a summer and things are ready to be picked and eaten, it is, it's so ironic because you sort of don't want it. It's almost like you've already eaten by being in the sun, being outside and growing it. It's like you've been nourished, you've been fed. Mm -hmm. Um, and I always find that I just don't really want to mm -hmm. eat those things. And um, and the other thing I've noticed over the years, because, you know, when you're younger, I don't think you you don't analyze things as much. You know, you're just you're just being, aren't you? You're just as a kid, you're just um, like you're in the present moment more. Um, and as I've got older and I'm a highly analytical person, what I've noticed is when we go away, because uh, my my husband is from Europe, um, from a country that actually is very hot most of the time, and I've been able to see over the years what I wasn't able to see previously, which is when we go and visit his family. You know, I just I literally it feels like I'm just living on air the whole time that we're there, um, and that's just from being out in the sun and being grounded on the beach and um, I spend a lot of time just sitting yeah. in the seawater just soaking and I can feel it soaking up all the minerals you know and then coming back out and just drying off under the sun again and then and then in about an hour I feel like I need to go and do that again and it's like replenishing everything that's been lost from living in an environment here in the UK that that's not really attainable in the same way and it always amazes me when I come back because it's like you have this new set of eyes where I just think wow it's it's like really obviously we need to eat and drink and I'm not saying we don't and we need to have good quality food and, and supplements and things as we need them but it always feels to me um what's sort of nourishing us and that's been the most important thing and it feels the most life-giving is being out in that sunshine and you know and also being grounded and being in the sea as well because i think the you know the sea water as well plays quite a big role in things but um the other thing i was going to ask you about because you were saying about it um the uh fire infrared you know it goes very deep um into the can go get into the bones near infrared, near infrared sorry yeah. can go into the bones near infrared. and something that always seems to come up that i that I, I i mean i don't know myself but i'm sure you can um elaborate on it is how it affects the eyes so with the sunshine you know again looking um sun gazing we know that it's really beneficial as long as you do it at certain points of the morning, like with the sunrise mm -hmm. and the sunset. Um, but how does that match up with the red light, with the sauna? Is it Does it have the same positive effect as what you would get if you were doing that with the sun? Should we not look at those red lights or should we go by sort of how sensitive we are to yeah, it? Yeah, that's a great question. So it, let's start out with, what, with sun, sun gazing. So when when did our ancestors do sun gazing 
it's usually at sunrise and sunset and uh, you can actually look at you can stare straight into the sun for the first few minutes of sunrise especially if you have um, if you have a low landscape and the reason for that is because right there at sunrise in the uh, and also the early morning light so for the first two hours of the day the proportion of near infrared and red wavelengths is much higher as compared to the ultraviolet and blue light as you go through the day and you hit midday where the sun is directly over us, the zenith of the sun, the amount of ultraviolet and blue light is, is the highest. So um, if we look at the sun in the morning or in the evening, or we're, we're exposed to the sun in the morning, in the evening, and even at sunrise, you know, even like doing sun gazing, we're, we're, we're taking advantage of the fact that the majority of what's, what we're receiving is near infrared and red. Um, and that, those are the healing wavelengths. Those are the wavelengths that stimulate all the things that we just talked about. It's all healing. Uh, the ultraviolet light is ionizing radiation, and blue light is right next to ultraviolet light on the spectrum. It's also very high energy light. It's called high energy visible light. It causes free radical formation. It's just such high energy light that it, it's damaging. It causes oxidative stress in our cells, and the ultraviolet light is directly mutagenic. It, it it can damage our DNA. But with the sun, even in the morning, really even at midday, even when you get the ultraviolet light, you are getting a huge dose of near infrared light into the cell that's creating antioxidants, that's stimulating healing and regeneration, that's really reversing any and all of those effects of the ultraviolet light that's occurring. So having said that, it's the ultraviolet light and the blue light that is causes a photochemical burn it's damaging to us so if you stare into the sun with your eyes um, you know it it, it 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 damages your retina it burns holes in it basically because it's too much energy this ultraviolet stuff in the mm -hmm. sauna we are um, there's no ultraviolet light or blue light at all but it is in the sun's form of incandescent broad spectrum um, red and near infrared that we're delivering to the person. So in the sauna, we don't close our eyes at all. Uh, we, we actually face the lights and then we rotate every, a quarter turn every five minutes. So you're, you're actually not f having your eyes directly exposed to the light the whole time. Right. But what we see in the research, also with our customers, but if we just look at the actual light therapy research, we see an incredible amount of benefit of doing this photobiomodulation to the eyes, to the ocular tissue. There's a recent study that showed that if you get near infrared light exposure in the morning to your eyes, and this was with humans, you, it improves your eyesight. It prevents worsening of your eyesight. It actually improves your eyesight as well, uh, the continual exposure. So it's right. it's healing. It's keeping the, the eye cells healthy, and it's healing them. There's research in right. the use of near infrared light to reduce diabetic diabetic retinopathy. Uh, we have customers who report um, that having their floaters be reduced and go away. So floaters are like these yeah. proteins and things that, you know, that, that could block the eyesight. So, you know, you're, 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 you're re reducing inflammation in the eyes and you're increasing blood flow and you're helping things heal. And so it's in general beneficial, but the question is, is too much of this not beneficial? Yeah. And the answer is yes. Just like sauna, light therapy is what's called ormetic stress therapy. So there's, uh, as we get the stimulus over time, there's a maximum benefit we get after a certain amount yeah. of time. And then after that, we kind of get declining benefits. Yeah. So how much light therapy is good? Mm -hmm. And and the answer to that, if you look at all the research, is uh, is aligned with what we get in nature from the sun. Yeah. So just to get a little bit technical here, the sun gives you like between 20 and 100 milliwatts per centimeter squared of near infrared light. So those are that's the measurement of light therapy or radiance, the, the power level of, of light therapy. So when you're outside on the equator cloudless day it's like 20 to 100 milliwatts per centimeter squared so 
when we do light therapy with those type of power levels, whether it's the sun or it's the sauna space incandescent bulb, or mm -hmm. also if it's an LED based light therapy, if we match those power levels and we um, get reasonable doses of reasonable durations of time, we um, all we, the only thing we get is benefit. There's actually no known side effect of photobiomodulation. Right. Where you get into okay. the problem zone is if you take, if you get way too much for way too long. Right. Like if you use an LED panel, you're only using those for like eight minutes. You know, there's a very short duration or those light, right. you know, those LED beds. You're using that mm -hmm. for a short duration with the sauna space sauna. Uh, the four bulbs delivers about 60 to 70 milliwatts per centimeter squared. So you're in there for 20 or 30 minutes. It's just a very beautiful match of what you would get outside in the sun for a while. Right. Um, if you if you have if you use a laser or some sort of uh, near infrared light source that is like two, three, four hundred milliwatts per centimeter squared and you're using it for too long, you're getting too much, you're putting too much energy into the cell and you get declining benefits. Right. And that's just like with the sauna. With the sauna, you want to sweat out a pound of water and raise core temperature three degrees. When you do that, there's all the cellular stuff that happens that mm -hmm. helps detox the cells, detox the body. It helps with cellular reoptimization through protein refolding and protein repair. Um, but if we heat up the body too much, you know, if we, if we heat up the body four, five, six degrees, we run the risk of heat stroke. Yeah. And so we're, we're gently stimulating the body as it's biologically programmed to get. And we're obviously designed to heat up the body. You know, you talked about how, mm -hmm. he, how good heat feels to you. Mm. We have these, 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 these enzymes, these proteins called heat shock proteins. And they're not made when our body's at resting body temperature. You have to heat the body up for a sustained period of time and it begins yeah. to produce these things. So it's a clear indication that we're designed to get this stimulus. We're designed to get uh, heated up and actually cooled down too. We're designed to withstand extreme temperatures for limited durations. And when we do that, it actually conditions our body like exercise to be fit and to be well. And if we don't do it, you know, we atrophy in a sense uh, mm -hmm. at the cellular level and um, our our cells become de-optimized. And with like with the light, this this light that we're getting from the sun, which we also recreate with with these sauna space bulbs is has this corrective optimizing effect even to our DNA itself, which is a process that kind of degenerates as we age uh, through senescence. Things don't mm -hmm. work as well. But this is reversing that and keeping us healthy as long as we do things in the ancestral context and that's really what I, I liked what you said in the beginning about how there's all this information nowadays and there's all these things we're supposed to be doing for our health and it seems kind of overwhelming like I have to do all this stuff and and all these things I have to keep in mind all the time just to be healthy mm. and I like to say is not not necessarily I think that's one perspective I think there's a different perspective, and that is uh, we can just be, you know, we can return to a sense of being. And when we return to a sense of being and we're being ourselves, our body remembers our system that we live in, that mm -hmm. our awareness sits in. It remembers what's good for it. And the things mm -hmm. that are good for it are very simple. Um, grounding, sunlight, mm -hmm. uh, being in balance with our circadian rhythm mm -hmm. uh, for women and also for men being in balance with the the lunar cycle mm. and um and eating things that are nourishing to us and not just eating a particular diet because we're told to do that but mm. listening intuitively to the body and um and understanding and knowing what it needs because you we really know we're all knowing we have this unlimited mm. s sense of not we have this unlimited knowledge in our body with these unlimited powers and systems in our bodies to, to stay really healthy and really optimal but we're conditioned by trauma by the modern modern environment you know and modern culture to ignore the self and to seek outside of ourselves the solution but the solution is actually already within so here at sauna space we're not you know you're not broken and we're not fixing you we're just helping you remember, hey, your body and your cells, they have all these amazing things that they do. You just mm. 
they 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 want uh, this nourishment that you used to get, you know, without even thinking about it, mm. as we as our as we used to live in an ancestral sense. Mm. I, there's it, it's funny once um, I've got three kids, and um, before I had my first baby um, a while ago now, but um, you know I did all different diets and things and health and um, <laughs> it's quite funny because when you become pregnant um, and you have children, I call it <clears throat> the bullshit radar because you there is something that happens <laughs> where you can literally call the bluff of everything because there is something that growing a baby gives you this sort of connects you back to your your innate wisdom um that mm -hmm. i don't want to say gets lost but maybe gets shut down or um goes to sleep or something you know especially when you're bombarded with so much do this do that do this be this be that and um mm -hmm. and then you get pregnant and then it's like <laughs> it's like no my body wants that and uh, my body wants that and you know and it just all becomes very clear what is nonsense and uh, and what isn't and i'm not talking about these really really unhealthy cravings that ladies can get i'm talking about sort of um you know, uh, nourishing, good nourishing food that maybe you've deprived yourself of because you are following something um, that said you shouldn't mm -hmm. eat it. So um, it, it's just amazing how that, you know, it calls that out and that's that's sort of something I've noticed and it gets stronger and stronger with each pregnancy actually. Um, and uh, And it's the same with my kids. It's like they... You know, I often see people say, but can children sit in saunas and do children sit in saunas? And, you know, it's like we 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 know people from the sort of Scandinavian places where we know children sit in saunas and we know that pregnant women go in the saunas. But it's really very simple where people say, but how long and, and should they and 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 you just think, well, it's just actually very much common sense, you know, because children tend to know like my children they they know when they're feeling un uncomfortably hot and they'll sort of they'll they'll move away from it you know they move away from the source that's making them uncomfortable or um you know they'll sit in front of the red lights and they i just they what i'm trying to say is is that children just seem to have this innate wisdom of um when they're allowed to have it they're they just know when they should leave something and how long they should be in mm -hmm. something and um I just find that that whole area of children and being pregnant, it sort of seems to bring more clarity into things that seemed very confusing about what was good and not good for health. And uh, I just wonder, do you get those questions a lot from people? Do you get a lot of questions from people saying, can my kids sit in the in the saunas? Can they use your saunas? And if so, and you know, how long? And I, I suspect you probably- Yeah, yeah, like absolutely. People, uh, people, you know, we nowadays were conditioned, or the 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 force, the pressure of conditioning is to be really left-brained with everything and to ra try to rationalize instead of intuit, you know, what's best for me. So, and I think that is important for people who are not optimal that are who are unhealthy who are sick who have brain fog and that that's a lot of us nowadays is is to have a good recommendation and always uh, and and so we have recommendations that are pretty conservative you know you start out with uh, as an adult you start out with 20 minutes and you use three or four bulbs but if you have an underlying health condition or autoimmune issues or body temperature regulation issues or anything else you know, after consulting your healthcare provider, you might start out with uh, using one or two bulbs and starting out with a duration of five or 10 minutes and easing into it and learning mm. and remembering that your body knows what it needs and it tells you what it needs. And you begin to develop that 
that that uh, reconnect with the innate wisdom of the body and you can feel when you've had enough in the sauna in the beginning you can measure your temperature mm -hmm. with the instant read thermometer and you can actually weigh yourself on a scale you know before and after the session you can see what how much uh, how many pounds of water you sweat out and you can gauge it that way but eventually you develop you remember that oh yeah I can I, I know what's good for me I know it feels to be the right amount and that's I, I I certainly don't time myself anymore in the sauna I know when I'm sweating a lot and I know what it feels like and I know when I've had enough and with children and also adults who are more optimal in body, mind, and spirit, we can tap, we can rely confidently on our innate wisdom and know what we need. And that includes using the sauna. With children, we recommend that they be supervised, of course, when they're in the sauna. And a very conservative recommendation is one minute per year of age. But I have uh, I have a 12 year old who can sit in the sauna for, you know, 20 minutes. And I have a seven year old who can sit in the sauna for uh, 10 or 15 minutes. And um, and they know when they've had enough. They know what's what's best for them. They know when to get out. And it's the same thing with animals, too. Animals have mitochondria. And we have a lot of our customers who it, whether they have just a love, a beloved animal or they have a service animal or whatever they do the sauna with them or the or if they have our portable therapy lights or they have our sauna panels and they're using them as a hearth in the living room outside of the sauna uh, a healthy biological being knows what it needs and knows when it's had enough yeah. and usually nowadays we don't get nearly enough of this so for me when i get home i turn on my sauna panel that's in my living room and i have it on the whole time that we're at home in the evening Right now, as I sit with you, I have our portable therapy light, the photon on this arm. I don't know right. if you can see it kind of here. Yeah. It is right here. I have it on next to me to cancel out the blue blue light stress yeah. from the screens. Mm -hmm. And I have it on all day long next to me. It's not pointed at me all the time. If it was, it would become too much after a while. But if I put it on the desk and I just angle it up and I just have it near me, it's this warm, comforting firelight that I have all day long. And um, how much is too much? Well, you know how much too much is uh, and you feel that. But in general, there's these precautionary recommendations. So children with a sauna, supervise them and you can start out with like five or 10 minutes. Mm. And depending on the age, once a child is hitting puberty and becoming an adult, they can do the adult protocol. Right. And there is some variability there that is case by case and needs to be determined by the, the parent or guardian and yep. in communication with with their child. But even when my uh, when my two boys were really young, when they were babies, I would still take them in the sauna for a few minutes and yeah. hold them there with me. And, and um, you know, that's that's a judgment call that every parent makes. But as you said, in the Scandinavian tradition, uh, uh, from a very young age, even from infants, they're they're using the sauna, and all yeah. all types of men and women of all ages, and even pregnant women are in, in the Scandinavian culture using sauna. So we we uh, don't recommend uh, pregnant women use it because they need to consult their healthcare provider. Yeah, of course. And that's I suppose that's more of a liability thing than yes. than anything, but. But certainly each person should make their own judgment call and what's best for them and how much they need. The photon yeah. therapy light, for example, you if you use it on the head, you want to limit it to about 10 minutes per hour because you don't want to overheat okay. the head. Okay. Uh, so if we're using it on the head or the throat, if you have thyroid mm -hmm. issues, people are using that for about 10 minutes per hour, okay. maybe a little more, maybe a little less. But if it's used on any other part of the body, you can use it for like for a uh, half an hour or even 40 minutes per hour on okay. on the gut on the feet on the shoulder for local relief uh, in the end though you you do as as you begin to heal your body so with sauna and with light therapy particularly with the full body sauna mm -hmm. when you detox you begin to remove these 
foreign things in your body that don't belong. And mm. when you, as you do that, you become more your true self and more aligned with your true self and more of who you actually are. And when you do that, it leads to a clarity of, of mind where your mind starts to work better and you start to notice and it starts to influence other things in your life. Like maybe you start to do that, this other self-care routine, um, you know, maybe it's meditation. Maybe it's just, oh, hey, I don't feel like eating that, that those croissants every day anymore. Like I'm going to yeah. I'm going to change this. And it has a domino effect to where you you start to get um, sort of a mental uh, improved mental constitution and strength and desire yeah. to do healthy things and do things for your self care. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. the clarity of mind leads you to correcting other things in your life. And when you yeah. start to you know, when you have that mental rejuvenation, that ultimately leads, although sometimes in the beginning, a lot of us, a lot of our customers feel this is, is really an existential uh, experience and a spiritual uh, actualization that's occurring where, hey, now I'm actually living the life I want to live. Now that my body and my mind are clear, I understand myself. Yeah. I know what I want. Mm -hmm. I'm maybe I don't know what my purpose is, but I see a path and, and a, a, a way forward to finding my purpose and living the life I want to live. And hmm. and that's what we're all about here at Sauna Space is a transformation of body, mind and spirit, which are all uh, all the same thing, really. You know, they're all these are kind of arbitrary distinctions, but we're you know, we're 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 half divine and unlimited and immortal. And then we're half carnal and mortal. And we're living in this in this system that we have that. Uh, we do need to take really good care of so it supports our 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 divinity and um, our spiritual nature if 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 we don't the the system can work against us you know the toxins clog us up and they make us weak mentally and 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 physically and they they become obstacles and dissonances that are, maybe don't prevent but present challenges to us being the highest and best version of ourselves so brian talk us through um the difference of your bulbs because you you have a very special red bulb don't you thermo is it thermolite the red bulb um yeah that you use on your panels and um also maybe probably i don't know if we can mention names but maybe not of um other saunas because one of the key things of your saunas are the fact that there's practically no no emfs um especially in your the, when you have the whole system um with the fabric so um i was hoping you could talk a little bit about the bulbs and what makes it's so different and unique and um like in my opinion i think it's sauna space is definitely leading the way in terms of saunas um i know there is one, one that's been very popular for a long time that claims to have very low emfs i don't know how true that is i don't have one of their saunas and i've not been able to test them but i know that people that are very concerned about emfs do have their saunas um but it feels to me that your one is probably <laughs> one of the only ones that actually is truly um emf free should i say um because i've i've seen you doing mm -hmm. the tests on them and showing it as zero which <clears throat> if like me and you and many other people concerned about being bombarded by emfs all the time it's a really important consideration when purchasing you know a sauna but also you've got the added benefit where you've got these red lights, which I don't believe all saunas have, do they? Yeah, so so two things let's let's talk about first is is the sauna space bulb and then we can talk about EMF, EMF shielding, EMF mitigation, the issues with man-made EMF. So I'll, if I could, I'll actually share my screen. I have a slide here that, that yep, sure. really Go explains this well, like this, the spectrum of the bulb. So this is our bulb. It's called the Thermalite bulb. I spent about four and a half years developing it. It's an improvement upon the incandescent heat lamp that was invented, you know, 120 years ago. 
Right. And it, it has a filament inside that's tuned to run at a higher Kelvin and still um, maintain the lifespan of the bulb of 5,000 hours. And when the bulb uh, w- with the filament being specially designed inside, it emits um, a lot more near infrared light than a regular heat lamp does. It's also um, handmade. It's it's mouth blown and hand rolled of hand stained glass. Most bulbs are are soft glass and they're just dyed red. Our right. bulbs are stained and the glass composition is not soft glass. Our bulbs are made of quartz. Brian, to so interrupt the, you, can you the, just the, can you just describe <laughs> why that's better that yours are dyed not. Um, can you can you explain why that's better? The yeah, two yeah. So, um, well, it's the the dyed bulbs. the The color is not as pretty, uh, and also some of these bulbs have coatings on them, mm-hmm. um, whether they're dye or they're Teflon coatings or silicone coatings. That right. you don't want that on the outside of the bulb when you're using it with humans in an enclosed yeah. space because you have off gassing issues that occur. Yeah. So, especially with the heat. Right? Um, yeah, so the heat will heat up the 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 chemical coating and and cause it to off gas somewhat in the air. Yeah. So you don't want that. And uh, basically, the bulb that I make is not. Uh, m- most of the light bulbs that are made nowadays are made at the lowest possible cost. Yeah. Our bulb is made in a traditional way um, that bulbs were made uh, fifty or eighty years ago. And mm-hmm. it is a lot more costly to make because they're hand blown, um, and they're and the glass is stained with um, it is the glass itself is stained as opposed to it being just painted red. Uh, so it, the construction of it and the build quality is a lot better. That's why we guarantee our bulbs for two years, which is pretty right. unique in in the industry. And that's really the only thing that eventually has to be replaced in the in the product, but. Uh, yeah, all that to say that we we basically I purpose designed this incandescent light bulb for human use. It has a lot more light therapy that comes out of it, mm-hmm. and you can see that uh, here. So this is the spectrum of the bulb, and you can see here there's a little bit of red light that you see, right? But most of the emission is in the near infrared band that you don't see. And what I mentioned before is. We we're talking about light therapy, the use of red and near infrared light to mm-hmm. heal damaged tissue and re-optimize healthy tissue. That is occurring in these wavelengths here from 600 to about 1,000 nanometers. Right. And then the latter half of the near infrared band is what begins to be absorbed by water and it's what's heating you in a very deeply penetrating radiant fashion, just like the sun does. And so most of our bulbs are designed to emphasize this spectrum, although there is some mid-infrared and there is some far-infrared. We're, we're getting optimal healing, heating here in near-infrared, and we're getting a lot of that light therapy too. So we're getting the benefit of both things. We're heating the cells up, and then the near-infrared wavelengths that are hitting the mitochondria are stimulating the light therapy responses. And if right. you look at this spectrum, It's a broad spectrum emission that includes all of the wavelengths under this curve in a particular like power distribution Mm -hmm. that matches the way the sun um, nourishes you. And the sun is an incandescent light source, just like looks like our bulb. So this is the sun. The sun is all of these wavelengths. It's a full spectrum emission with the majority of what we absorb is actually near infrared. Mm -hmm. Uh, The big difference between the sun and uh, our bulb is, as you can see, the sun has a lot of ultraviolet light and a lot of blue light too. Right. But it's still giving you a majority of its near infrared. So what we said is, hey, let's deliver as much as we can of the healing com- component of the sun, which is mostly near infrared, but let's give it to you in the full spectrum shape and nature and form of light that we're biologically programmed to get and that's near infrared so Mm -hmm. our bulb is giving you mostly near infrared but it is also supporting the ability to heat the body with some mid infrared and some far infrared all the other saunas that are out there that are called infrared saunas are using far infrared wavelengths which are these wavelengths that are way out here right uh that are very long wavelength infrared they're very low energy it's 100 percent absorbed by water and that's why the saunas 
the, the infrared saunas and also the traditional Finnish saunas have to heat the air up really hot because it's right. the air that's heating you up conductively from the outside in. Uh -huh. In the sauna space, we're heating you like the sun does with radiant near infrared heat as the primary heat source from the bulbs. Right. So some of those other saunas, they call themselves full spectrum. Mm -hmm. And what they're doing is they have far infrared emitters that emit a kind of a low efficiency way to heat the body mm -hmm. by convection. And then they add in some red LEDs or they may add in some low energy near infrared emitters that are coil emitters on two sides of like the door. Right. And there's, they're saying, well, you're getting photobiomodulation with these and then separately you're getting the heating with the far infrared panels that are at like seat, seated level that surround the user. So they're saying it's full spectrum, but really it's a composite spectrum that they're trying to recreate with these two technologies, both of which are not doing as good of a job as an incandescent light source does, which mimics how the sun right. produces light by incandescence. So they, what we're saying is no, let's just do what the sun does because yep. that gives you the light and the heat therapy that's near infrared centric and is also full spectrum. So you get this full complement of all of these wavelengths here. If we contrast this with LEDs, I don't know if I have a slide. I was just going to say to add to that, they're also in these saunas. It's not incandescent light, is it? It's, it's LED that's being used, which, as we know, comes again with its own problems. Yeah. yeah so here's a quick slide. This is what a red or near infrared LED panel looks like. So uh, remember, our spectrum is this nice, gentle curve that gives you mm -hmm. all of these wavelengths from 600 mm -hmm. to 1000. A red LED panel gives you a spike at 660, or a near infrared LED panel gives you a spike at like 830, 840. So the light is very digital. It's very fractionated. It's mm -hmm. kind of like vitamin C powder, where the sun <laughs> and sauna space with incandescent light were like the orange. Yeah. And there is a purpose for both of them. And, and LEDs, they, you know, they they are doing their job and they're providing this light therapy effect in the cell. But the the cells and the body are programmed to get incandescent light. And so mm -hmm. our light, we like to call it the firelight. It's very nourishing. It feels like sitting in front of the bonfire. If you close your eyes in the sauna, it feels like you're standing in front of the sun. Mm -hmm. And that's that, that quality and nature of this light that's doing more than an LED does. And it's nourishing mm -hmm. you with all of these wavelengths. So the heat is soothing and gentle but it's also very joyful and rejuvenating because you're getting the light therapy at the same time mm -hmm. and not in a limited way with an LED bank that's far away from the body, but in fact, bathing the whole body in mm. the photobiomodulation wavelengths and the heating at the same time. So those are the, the big, here, I'll stop sharing this. So those are the big differences between us, uh, and the LEDs and the other saunas in terms of spectrum. The other saunas, because they're using the air to heat the body, they require a lot of preheating. You have to be preheated for half an hour. And most of those companies recommend you sit in their sauna for at least an hour to yeah. get that three degree temperature increase and the, and, the, mm -hmm. um, and the sweating going on, the one pound of water sweating. In sauna space, you don't preheat it at all. You just get in and turn the lights on. Yeah. As soon as you do that, the heat is radiantly heating you from within that core heating effect is happening immediately. You start sweating in 10 minutes mm -hmm. in 20 to 25 minutes, you have achieved the three degree temperature increase and the sweating results. Right. So the whole session is a lot more efficient. It yep. doesn't take an hour and a half between preheating and heating. It's a half an hour overall. Yep. And also because we're not using the air to really heat the body up, we just want the air to be hot enough to not cool the user down. The heating effect is very gentle and soothing. It's not intense and oppressive as some of these 170, 880 degree saunas are for some people. Some people love that. Like I'm sure you enjoy <laughs> that. But there are a lot of people yeah. who uh, say this is too hot. I can't withstand it, especially people who have body temperature regulation problems. Yeah. People with autoimmune yeah. and with Hashimoto's and thyroid issues often can't withstand mm -hmm that heat long enough to get the benefit yeah so they find our our approach a lot more accessible a lot more soothing mm -hmm. 
Mm. And and also uh, it I should also say from a experience standpoint when you have the light therapy substantially a part of the sauna therapy experience it's making the sauna therapy less stressful it's yeah. making it more enjoyable yeah. and more gentle on the body so the overall um the overall effect the synergistic effect is more pronounced and more you know it, it feels very rejuvenative it feels very zen you come mm-hmm. out and you mm-hmm. feel clear and energized and and grounded and centered as opposed to feeling like drained out and worn out. Right. So it's a very enjoyable right. thing that people get excited like hey, I'm going to get in my sauna space. I'm I'm you know, I'm uh, that's something I'm looking forward to. Yeah. And I know that I'm not having to do anything in there. I just get to be in yeah. there and the experience is very different from other saunas. So So And I uh, think the to, body to answer temp- your second question Sorry, I was going to say, and I Go think that the the body, the t- the um, the temperature regulation problem, I think is is so prevalent as well. Um, it is not uncommon actually here that when we do get some sunshine, I mean, you know, people just talk to each other when they're out and about, but it's not uncommon that you just walk around and you hear people go, "Oh, it's too hot," and it, it's you know, it's like twenty three Celsius at that point um you probably do fahrenheit do you (laughs) but anyway it's not very hot and um and people are struggling even at sort of 23 degrees you know and i hear that all the time and i just you know or when i was pregnant people would say oh you because i'm always pregnant like through the summer and they say oh you poor thing you must be really struggling and um i'd be like no i'm really not really not struggling i love it actually it's the best ever um, but I find that that's, that seems to be really, really prevalent is that people do not seem to have the ability to, um, to just regulate themselves, even when the temperature is not even really that high, really. But, uh, so I think that's what you're saying is, is, um, is a nice thing to know if you're thinking of purchasing a sauna for your health in knowing that it's going to be it's something to look forward to rather than to dread in thinking oh my god i can't handle you know getting into this thing into this space that's going to be too hot for me so i think that's really helpful yeah it's 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 definitely it's definitely nourishing it's definitely different yeah we do uh we also see that a lot of customers report that uh you can see that in our customer reviews you can actually search those keywords like um a lot of people have low resting body temperature of below, you know, 37 degrees Celsius, uh, 97.6 right. degrees Fahrenheit. Some people will be one, two, even three degrees lower at their basal body temperature, which reduces their enzymatic functioning quite dramatically. And so that's not normal. That's that's a uh, that's outside of of of, of optimal. Mm-hmm. And so when you use sauna, and you you know, and our customers have reported in the use of our sauna, the 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 resting body temperature slowly increases as the body optimizes and right. the body begins to sweat more mm. and the body's tolerance to heat improves. So the body gets tempered and those people who are challenged with being at 23 degrees Celsius, they their, their body is much better able to withstand and enjoy these hotter temperatures. But yeah, that's, that's really common. And I think with our product, the light therapy is helping correct systems in the cells in addition to the heat shock protein response and the heat therapy in such a way that you're getting a really powerful cellular reoptimization right that that's occurring and that feels good when you're doing the experience and makes it enjoyable but uh, but certainly over time as you continue to use it it you get this very powerful very deep cellular reoptimization in all of the cells of the body and when all the cells of the bodies are improved the organs and the higher systems of the body work better. Right. So, uh, yeah. So your other question was about EMFs. And uh, this is uh, this is an important topic. It's not something to be, I guess, scared of. There's a lot of gloom and doom, I think, when people talk about this subject. But it is something to be aware of. Our, our ancestors didn't have any man-made electromagnetism uh, that they experienced. The only electromagnetism was that of the earth 
and the plants and the animals and the, the of the earth and then of the sun and the stars and primarily so it's primarily the sun and eventually you know hundreds of thousands of years ago man created fire there's really a recreation of the experience with the sun and fire is incandescent light just like the incandescent bulb we do at sauna space so these are this is man-made electromagnetism but it's it's informed by the wisdom of nature and it's good and healthy and healing for us we all enjoy sitting by the bonfire and the fireplace it's not just the heat it's the light therapy as well it's mm-hmm. it's nourishing for us and and beneficial but about 100 years ago we invented electricity and then so- shortly after that well more than that now 130 years ago and then shortly after that we began to invent uh, wireless electromagnetism like radio waves and and microwaves and so nowadays we have like over a billion billion times more man-made electric fields in the electricity in our homes and more than ever the electric fields in the air all the wireless data that's going around that's actually damaging to our body because of the wavelength the frequency that it is and and um and the and the, the waveform and the nature of the light it causes oxidative stress in the body it if you have a cell phone in your pocket for three days it's equivalent to x-ray in your gonads if you look at the literature and you see you look at the most common associations with cell phone use and disease uh the most common associations are brain cancer and throat cancer and mouth mm-hmm. cancer and that makes sense because the you know they're holding the cell phone like this all the mm-hmm. time mm-hmm. people who live you know near uh, uh workers who work on cell phone towers who have much higher exposures to microwave radiation than the rest of us the, you see a lot of cancer clusters in those populations and yeah. so we're see if you can look up on the emf portal and other places you can see in the literature there is an issue here it's a new stress in our environment we're not biologically mm-hmm. programmed to to process it it causes oxidative stress in our cells and through proxy nitrite production causes actually dna damage slowly Hmm. so what can we do about it first of all it's important to note that sauna use reverses proxy nitrite concentration in two different ways through tetrahydrobropterin production and through vascular shear stress so all that to say that when you use sauna when you do a sauna session you reverse the the this oxidative stress in the body that emfs cause so we can't avoid all the emfs stress that's out there but we can heal its damage and reverse it and sauna is uh one of the only known ways to do that not the only way but it's a very well documented way to do that so uh, sauna is becomes even more important not just for heavy metal and environmental Mm -hmm. toxin detox but also for electromagnetic detox Mm -hmm. so that's fascinating beyond that though it's like well what can we do in what 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 can i what can i do in terms of product design to to limit and remove this stressful component from the experience and i didn't have this in the beginning i didn't even know what it was but several years into the development of our products I began to look into it in ways to uh, explore how do we how do we remove the man-made emf component from stressing the user out while they're using the product and that led to the development of emf shielding technology in our light panels uh, from the faraday lamp guard that protects the bulb uh, to the shielded wiring inside to the shielded power cord we developed a design purpose-driven design to make sure that no electric fields or magnetic fields from our our panels are influencing the user mm-hmm. and that was really cool we're, we're still the only company that's doing that methodically and showing that how how we test that and you can see that mm-hmm. on our instagram and um and elsewhere <laughs> like you don't get any voltage stress or magnetic field stress from our products when you use them as directed the magnetic field only comes a few inches off the panel and there is no electric field that can be measured at all. So right. first we dealt with that, but then we said, well, hey, what about the environmental man-made EMFs in the home? The Wi-Fi, the electric fields from electricity, and, and of course, cell phone signal that's everywhere. So eventually we developed the grounding mat. So all of our saunas come with a grounding mat that has conductive material in it that's grounded to the light panel's mm-hmm. ground. And this does two things. 
One, it protects us, the user substantially from the electric fields from electricity. So it's protecting you from the low frequency electric fields and the electricity from getting to you. And it also introduces the grounding earthing therapy into the product. And what grounding and earthing therapy is, is when you stand out on the earth barefoot, you have this big infusion of millions of electrons into your body immediately. And that results in a reversal and a neutralization of the positive charge that you build up that mm -hmm. you get from toxins and pathogens and EMF stress. So yep. in the sauna, we recreate that experience. And that's also something that makes our sauna experience very, very lovely is, is you're uh, as much as possible. We're, we're mimicking the ancestral environment where mm. humans were out there sitting in the sun, feet in the ground, you know, and uh, exposed to natural elements entirely and removing these man-made stressors that uh, exist nowadays. And so the last step was, well, what can we do about the wireless EMF? And so we developed our Faraday fabric. We developed an organic fabric made of 35% silver and organic cotton that's washable. It's a really cool fabric. It took us a couple of years to develop. And we offer our Faraday EMF shield, our Faraday liner that you can get as an optional upgrade to your sauna. Mm -hmm. And that blocks out all of the wireless radiation. So mm. as long as you don't take mm. your cell phone in there and, or if you take it in, it's on airplane mode. When you go in the sauna and close the curtain, you're in a pre-technology space, a pre-1891 mm. space where you don't have any man-made EMF on the body uh, from any any source really at all. But you do have electromagnetism you're exposed to. And that is this firelight, this, this near infrared incandescent light like we get from the sun, but without ultraviolet mm -hmm. and without blue. So you're bathed in this nourishing light and we've removed all the em em EMF stress and there's no Bluetooth track lighting. You know, there's no blue track lighting. There's no Bluetooth speakers. There's actually no door with glass that you can look out into the stressful world. We want you to go inward and go into mm -hmm. yourself and have this like maximally relaxing experience where the nervous system gets relaxed the body goes into its rest and digest and heal mode and you're energized and rejuvenated and centered and grounded. And it becomes a very meditative space and a very, um, you know, a very calming environment in there. And so we did all that over the course of years in responding to both the issues of a lot of EMFs that are going on and, and the customer what you know, what our customers wanted, they wanted EMF protection. So we, I don't, I can't speak to other brands that are not mine specifically because uh, they're not my product. I can only speak to my product. What we do works. We have tested it. We show you how to test it and we ship all of our products with a plug outlet tester. So all you do is make sure your outlet is properly grounded and your product will uh, it will work in terms of the light panels being grounded and the Faraday and the grounding mat just snaps in with a cable into mm. the light panels uh, ground jack. So it's very easy to install. Right. It's guaranteed as long as the outlet's grounded and that cable is connected, it's going to ground you and the Faraday system will, will work. But you can also test that as we have and we show on our social media. You can test it with an RF meter or a body voltage meter. Yeah. Hey, this actually works. I'm not getting any voltage on my body. My body voltage is, is reading low or zero. And the environment inside the Faraday sauna is completely like there's almost no wireless radiation that you can measure at all. Mm. Other brands are claiming to be low EMF, but they're not shielding from both electric fields and magnetic fields. Right. They'll some of them shield from magnetic fields, but don't talk about electric fields. And they'll say, yeah, yeah, we're very low EMF. Look at how low our milligauss rating is. And that's a magnetic field right. rating, but they don't talk about electric fields. Right. Or they may be shielding with both of them, but they're not addressing the electric fields in the home environment. And the homes nowadays with the Internet of Things, we have so much, so many wirelessly connected devices and stuff that. Yeah. It, it's ideally you create this the perfect therapeutic environment is one in which the user is totally protected from all the ambient emf through shielding principles mm. so we've done all that over the years and you can test that for yourself and you can see that and we 
you know, we've been uh, we, definitely a leader in, in that approach. And um, I think it's good. Mm-hmm. It's, 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 I wish more products were not just sauna, but all home consumer products were considering electromagnetic shielding principles and the use of their products because it is so beneficial mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. us. Yeah. So it's not, it's not something to, so what know, do you find? We're all exposed to it all the time, but you know, there's ways to lower our experience, you know, our yeah. exposure to it and with sauna and with keeping yourself healthy, there's, you know, we can live with this and still thrive in this modern environment. Right. What do you find Brian comes back the most to you feedback wise that people have noticed? Um, been like what what do you see the most on the whole where people come back to you and said i've noticed that i'm so much better from this or because of this you like do you is there i'm sure everybody's diff you know I'm, i know everybody's different mm-hmm. different problems to begin with and but have you found in your experience there seems to be a mean um in that you get the same thing you get the same feedback like this has gone away or that's gone away because you, you yourself, I think your experience was you, you had, um, skin issues, didn't you? And, um, mm-hmm. and, and some other issues clear up once you started using saunas. And, um, I'm just wondering what's the most common feedback that you get from people that say, I healed this. It's gone. It's gone forever. Do you get something that's very common? Yeah, it's that? a it's a it's a challenging question because the answer is really people get better and find symptom amelioration in whatever their problem is. And there's just such a wide array right. of issues that people have nowadays, but certainly a couple of things to call out. Your skin will very quickly look better. That's the first thing that begins to improve. And people's energy levels right. usually improve quickly. People's quality of sleep also Team seems to improve quickly. And those are three things that actually I was also personally afflicted with in the beginning. And, and that was the reason I started Sauna Space. So those things are immediate. Also, people who have uh, um, pain, muscle and joint pain usually find okay. there's, uh, uh, um, that those things get better really quickly. And the. So that the rest- just leads, sorry. That yeah. le- Sorry, Brian, that just leads me to another because you just made me think of another question. So at the minute, there's there's a big thing on the um, on the red light therapy on its own. So no sauna or anything, but just the red light boxes that are, I think, predominantly they're LEDs. But um, where do, so you were saying about pain relief and, and um, you know maybe e- even sort of pain relief with injury because I know that's what a lot of people use the red light therapy for when they're just using the red light therapy boxes but where how does yours compare to that to to those red light boxes versus your red lights is it more effective um because as you were saying earlier it's penetrating deeper than what the led red light boxes can do yeah yeah uh we use near infrared lights so you get this this the stimulation goes to the deepest organs of the body uh it's certainly yeah. it's 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 stimulating the skin but it's also going in deep and stimulating the nervous system and the internal organs and you're getting yeah. that healing benefit of of light therapy to the deepest tissues of the body so uh, light therapy whether it's red or near infrared is used for wound healing for uh inflammation yeah. reduction for recovery from for, for regeneration and for recovery from like TBI and, and stroke recovery and, and, and amelioration neuropathies and things like that. But what you see is that that general definition, the use of red and near infrared light to heal damaged tissue and to re, and to optimize function of healthy tissue, it's going to do that wherever it reaches. The only issue with red light, it doesn't go in deep. Yeah. It's only surface level. It's, it's still only right. stimulating the skin and maybe a centimeter or more deep. The near infrared light does the same thing but at a deeper level. So if we're gonna, if you're gonna use an LED panel, I would recommend you only use a near infrared panel. If you're gonna spend the time to do it, use the 
wavelength okay. that does the same thing as red but penetrates deeper. The big difference with us right. is not just that we use mostly near infrared, which is more deeply penetrating, more deeply stimulating all the tissues of the body. We're also recognizing that nature always gave us this alliance of light and heat therapy. And heat has a, a lot of benefit to the cells, the reoptimization function of the heat shock proteins of fixing cellular protein function and refolding misfolded proteins. Um, the increased blood circulation and tissue oxygenation that comes from heat. Heat is also associated with uh, pain reduction and inflammation reduction mm -hmm. even because it's improving blood flow. When you do these two together, yeah. you're stacking the therapies and you're getting more benefit from, from both than doing two of them separately. There's even systems in the body that are designed to get light and heat stimulus at the same time. Uh, and there's, you know, without going into the weeds of all that, there are cellular systems that are benefiting mm -hmm. from both at the same time. And so it makes sense to do both. Also, uh, the light therapy alone doesn't address everything. It doesn't really have a detox effect. Um, even though yeah. there's a lot of these overlapping benefits, yeah. the detox effect really comes from the heat shock protein response, which comes from the heat shock. So you really need that to yeah. cleanse the body of pollutants and poisons mm -hmm. that are absolutely mm -hmm. if we look at disease my personal opinion is that all dis-ease comes from some kind of disharmony in the internal or the external environment we look at autoimmune mm -hmm. disease and cancer and things mm -hmm. like that those are poison problems more than anything else the body is not mm -hmm. genetically mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> flawed we know that our yeah. external environment influences the expression of our genes and they can turn it on and off based on us becoming toxic or, or eating the right nutrients. There's a big influence. It's called epigenetics. So there's not really, in my opinion, mm -hmm. a, pre -genet a genetic predisposition to, to most anything. It's all turned on and off by our internal and our, our external cheese. environment. So uh, on mm -hmm. the other hand, heat therapy and sauna so sauna, you ask like, well, what does this do for people? Sauna, frequent sauna use reduces your risk of all-cause mortality. So that reduces your risk of dying of all things that are not trauma-related or accident-related. Mm -hmm. And that's because you're, you're cleansing the body and purifying it, and you're re-optimizing how the cells work. So we see that people live longer, healthier lives, and their risk of dementia is reduced with frequent sauna use. And the more sauna use you do, the better. If you sauna one day a week, it's like a 20 to 30% reduction in your risk of all cause mortality. If you use sauna three days a week, you have an additional like 30% risk uh, reduction. And that's a 20 year right. population study of 2000 people in Finland that they followed for another six or seven years and found the same outcomes in risk of dementia. And so, those two things are so powerful you people are living longer um and it's it's affecting all all types of people no matter where you're coming from whether mm -hmm. it's it's cardiovascular problems or autoimmune problems or neuropsychiatric problems or you have gut issues and gut inflammation you have a lot of gi problems uh, or you have edema mm -hmm. and and other things people seem to get everyone gets better when they use and they incorporate sauna as a as a frequent lifestyle practice but having said that, you yeah. don't have a whole lot of epigenetic repair and anti what we call anti-aging effects as much where we're repairing, we're literally anti-aging and making the gene expression work better. That is a very unique effect of light therapy. So when we combine these two things, mm -hmm. sauna and light therapy, we get all the things uh, that we would want in terms of self-care and, and self-maintenance. Yeah. And if we can combine that with other simple things like drinking really clean, clean, structured, high quality water and and getting outside, grounding, being in tune with nature mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. working on ourselves, working on on truth and love and our relationships, relationship with self, relationship with others around us. You know, we all get better. But if you're looking, uh, if you want like specific customer stories on, hey. 
I, w- I was dealing with eczema and, and what did sauna space do for a certain customer. You can go on our website and search our customer reviews in the bottom of each product page. You can actually search keywords mm. and you can get specific with some of those customer experiences. We have hundreds of them on there and they're all quite lengthy and, sure. and really impressive. Everybody uh, who actually uses the product with, with discipline uh, definitely keeps it and they definitely get better. Most people who, the few people yeah. who do return it are usually those people who don't give it a chance or, or don't use it. Yeah. Wow. Well, Brian, I've kept you for almost an hour and a half. Um, so it's just just one last quote. It wasn't actually a question. It's a request, <laughs> which is when when will you make a, a machine that can, um, you know, like a, a tanning bed type of machine where it can sort of influence and grow your your vitamin D levels. I think Dr. McCullough used to have one a long time ago, um, and I wasn't yeah, able yeah, to get um, one before he he taken them down because I can't take vitamin D. You see, and I, the trouble is, is that if I lived somewhere where I could get it from the sun, because I would be in the sun all day every day, I, it wouldn't matter to me but um i can't take vitamin d i've taken every type of vitamin d there is like of high quality of course but every every type and it just gives me such severe nausea that i just can't do it and that i found that the the only way i can get my d levels up is um to either go abroad <laughs> or to use um tanning beds that have, and where we live now, because we, we now live sort of very remotely in the mountains in the middle of nowhere, but we did used to live in a near a city where there were tanning beds available that had very low EMF and very low UV A light from them. And they were specifically made for that purpose to help, like Dr. McCullough's ones, to help, you know, the goal of increasing your vitamin D levels. But, um, please invent one <laughs> yeah it's it's a tricky one uh but you know you what you can do is you can use a clear uh you can replace one of our bulbs with a clear heat lamp uh we don't offer that right. ourselves right now but a clear heat lamp will give out some ultraviolet light and some blue light and there are also right um basically vitamin d lamps that are essentially emitting a lot of ultraviolet light. I prefer the ones that are right. um, that are halogen based that can screw in and you can actually incorporate that into your sauna. We don't offer that ourselves, but okay. there are some people who uh, in conjunction with using a sauna space sauna are using uh, a, a vitamin D light. And those are like really high lux, right. like 10,000 lux ultraviolet lights it's just that you don't want to use that only you want to have that be using that in conjunction if you don't have any access to sunlight in conjunction with you know sauna space or other product that gives you a lot of near infrared so you're you're trying again to recreate what the sun gives a lot of a lot of near infrared there is really nothing that replaces the sun that's what i understand in my discussions with dr mercola is that he's tested uh, when we were talking about this, he was explaining how he's tested his vitamin D levels uh, routinely throughout the years, and he finds that the the most effective way to keep them at a very high optimal level is is sunlight. You know, it's lots of sunlight. Yeah. It's not uh, orally ingested vitamin yeah. D, although vitamin D uh, or oral vitamin D can be very helpful if you're experiencing, you know, if you're infected, you know, and you have have the flu or you have some kind of contagion that you've you're you're um, under the weather uh, that can be helpful in those instances but it is a tricky thing providing um, you can synthesize yeah, it yeah it mm-hmm. is a tricky thing because we're designed to get from the sun ultraviolet light and and near infrared yeah. light together when we separate them out we have to be careful about particularly with the ultraviolet light how we dose it and also there's an issue nowadays mm-hmm. with with how um, we eat a lot of seed oil, the the Western diet now has like in America anyway, it's like forty percent seed oil in terms of the oil intake that you have. And a hundred mm-hmm. years ago, it was probably two mm-hmm. percent. The seed oils are polyunsaturated yeah. fatty acids, and they have a double um, 
They have a couple double bonds in them that make it make them easily oxidized by ultraviolet light. So when you have a lot of seed oils mm. in your diet, you have a lot of seed oils in your cell membranes and your mitochondrial membranes, and it yeah. makes you very susceptible to getting burned and damaged by the ultraviolet light from the sun. Yeah. So that that's like part of why people nowadays like can't handle the sunlight and you know they get sun poisoning. Sun, yeah. Um, it's it's uh, <laughs> yeah. It's it, it's the and then they we, lather we're, themselves we're very, with that lovely cream. Yeah, and then they use sunscreen. So uh, it is it is something to keep in mind. <laughs> I will take the feedback uh, and and keep it in mind. But there are some biohacks that people are doing where they're using our products with vitamin D lamps, either halogen based or even LED based. Okay. And okay. those are th those are cool. better than nothing. And um, and then when you do have sun wherever you are, you know, get out there and take advantage of it mm -hmm. in those hours where you have it. It's yeah, I do. <laughs> I do. Honestly, I run out there. I'm like a cat. You know, the way the cat, you know, where the sun comes through the window and the and then the cat will just move along with that sun, with the slither, you know, it will just keep going. I'm literally like that I'm wherever the sun is. If the sun's on one side of the road, I'll cross the road like into the sun. And everyone else will be on the other side in the shade. Yeah, I'm the same way. I always walk on the sunny side of the street. I totally get you there. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, once you remember how how important, how how nourishing is, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's so integral to what we are. It, it, light, we're beings of light, and yeah. light is the ultimate nutrient in for our bodies, minds, and spirits. And that light uh, is was originally the sun, is where we got everything. And the firelight is mm -hmm. kind of the next best thing. Yes, amen to that. Well, Brian, thank you so much for your time and all your expertise. Um, it's amazing. you are got so much knowledge. Thank you. Thank you so much for doing what you do and what you're making and putting out there. And thank you. Yeah, thank you. I love what I do and I'm always grateful to share and illuminate some of these tricky topics with, with people. So I'm, I'm very thankful that you had me. Thanks, Brian. You're welcome. I'll say goodbye for now. Thank you. Bye. So a very big thank you to Brian for joining me today and sharing everything he shared. I mean, he really went into some depth uh, about saunering, and I hope that's going to be uh, very useful for those of you that listen and possibly even life-changing for some people that decide to invest in, in a sauna and start saunering themselves. Um, thank you for tuning in to A Book of Kin as well. And as I've mentioned on previous episodes, this is a new podcast. So a uh, subscription, um, a review, comment would all be greatly appreciated. And any information you may need to know about Brian, his website, I'm going to add all the links in the descriptions. Thank you again. Bye for now.